Yeah. A lot of writers get drunk to write, don't they? Oh, yes. Benchley yeah. was drunk most of the time. Yeah. Really? I don't think anybody can write when they're drinking. When they're drinking? Not really. <clears throat> I, I, I think that it's impossible for a, uh, for a person to really write if they're, uh, uh, while they're drinking. Wasn't what can that? happen is that a, you, a writer can write and get, uh, uh, say, a day's work done. At the end of the day, he can take two or three drinks and something in it loosens uh, him up and so that he can go through what he's done and suddenly get a kind of inspiration in his rewriting. But it's impossible to, to drink and write well, at the same well, time as well, drug and write, which is that was an amazing drunk. thing. What? St. Clair Lewis was a big drunk. Yes, but he wasn't drink. He couldn't be writing and drinking at the same time. Mm, it's perhaps impossible. Not. Yeah. Perhaps not. Unfortunately, I'm not doing either. <laughs> <laughs> what I think is so curious is the whole idea of taking drugs and writing because it doesn't yeah. work. If there's any one thing in the world that requires total concentration, it's writing. And yet there are a few writers who claim they, they wrote with drugs, although you can usually tell it, I, I always feel. Tell me, one, tell me one writer. They wrote when they, they were at stud, did you say? <laughs> say? Did you say that? No, I said, well, it, under the influence of drugs. Oh, drugs. I thought you said of... when they were at stud, they couldn't write well. <laughs> well, it's kind of difficult. Have you ever noticed that everything that you hear wrong has the, a common theme running through it? <laughs> <laughs> We have, uh, <laughs> Unfor <laughs> Unfortunately, it's getting less common all the time. <laughs> right. We have a message. We'll be right back. Uh, don't you have a book about to appear now? For a couple of years, we've been waiting for answered prayers. Mm. And uh, have you turned it over to the publisher yet? No. I refer to it now as my posthumous novel. <laughs> because yeah. either I'm going to kill it or it's going to kill me. It's just yeah. sort of like an English Chinese dinner. It grows and grows. I can't seem to get to the bottom of it. It isn't that you don't know how to touch type that's holding it up or anything. <laughs> it's the... I, I write longhand. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I can only write by dictating. Really? I cannot write with a typewriter or a lead pencil. You dictate to a secretary? I dictate to a secretary, yes. Yeah. Henry James dictated... Uh, I want to tell you about Henry James. Mm -hmm. Some woman in South Carolina or someplace, she uh, visited Hollywood and she wanted to meet me that I was a great fan of Henry James. Mm -hmm. And she invited me to come down to some town in the South and if I would talk about uh, Henry James. Well, I don't know any more about Henry James than I did. And I wrote her a letter and said, you had me confused. I'm very familiar with the works of Jesse James and, and Harry James, who was married to Betsy Grable or something. But I don't know anything about Henry James, and I didn't. And I never had to go to that town. But they had sent me the money first to come down there. So I made a little profit there. More than I made with this guy in the front row here. He's my financial advisor. He dropped ten points on me today. Yeah. What man is that? Well... The I don't like to identify lawyers. him <laughs> because uh, his reputation is none too good as it is. <laughs> and uh, he's sitting there and in the front row yet besides, so everybody would be sure to know if I mention him who he actually is. When the market crashed in 29, I engaged him as my financial advisor, and we've been together since then. And that's about 40 years. Started with a crash. And started, <laughs> ever since. started with a crash, yes. Yeah. Is it true that once during the, during the stock market crash, or at some point you went down and appeared at the stock exchange yes, itself? Yes, I did, and I sang, uh, When Irish Eyes Are Smiling in the Stock Exchange. <laughs> For no particular reason, except I was so angry at, the, at Wall Street. Yeah. And I was using him at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, over the years, we've been fairly successful together. He uh, is very conservative, very shrewd, and I suggest almost everybody in the audience who hasn't got any money to get a hold of this man. <laughs> he will wipe you out almost instantly. Have you ever thought how you'd feel if all your money were taken away from you? Could you live? It happened to me today. What? It happened to me today. How? Well, for five years, I've been having a controversy with the Internal Revenue Service, and today yeah. they settled it. 
and they just took all my money away. <laughs> After five years of controversy, yesterday it was announced today what the settlement was going to be, so that was the end of it. It was not in your favor. No, I'm just going to have to walk the street with my prices strapped to my back from now on. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about I, I living don't... in a tree? I think <laughs> that is terrible news to get. Did they listen to your arguments and for five years? Yes, and yeah. but I have to pay five years of fines for having talked to them for so long. You know, long. you can cure that by getting married. You can split the taxes that way. <laughs> split the taxes. Who you suggest that I get? If you're married. a single man, you pay yeah. a much bigger <laughs> income tax than if you're a married man. I didn't realize that. Well, it's true. So there are advantages to being yes, married. Yes, that's about the only one that I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> That when you're at home alone at night mm -hmm. in a single bed, it doesn't help any. No. But uh, if you have a companion with you who is, uh, listen, will listen to reason, mm -hmm. I think there is money to be made in income tax. <laughs> I think we can all profit from that lesson. Um, I'm not sure exactly how, but it sounded fine. Truman, yeah. have you ever thought of getting married? and splitting the tax? Will you find somebody for me to marry and I'll consider it, okay? As, I would, as long I would as marry you, you in a minute if you were not <laughs> write another hit book like you did about Kansas. Yeah, did you read on Cold Blood? Yes, of course I did. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Will, you, will you consider this an engagement? Yes, positively. <laughs> well, positively. You're a little old for me, though. That's wrong. I can't give you what you're entitled to. We're, we're, <laughs> the best years of your life. <laughs> we'll be we'll be back probably. I don't. <laughs> the time has flown away, and we have um, not much left. In fact, about thirty seconds, and that's time to thank Truman Capote and Groucho Marx and Jim Fowler and the Sloth, and uh, all of you come back again. You hear? Well, I don't know. Can you get him again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he may have other animals. Thank you. We'll, we'll have see you it. ever brought an elephant on the show? <laughs> Please, I have enough problems. We'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs>